All right, just a short walk from the uh, caravan park that we're staying at. That's up on the main road. I'll show you a little bit of that later, the Woomera uh, caravan park. A short walk or a short drive into the uh, center of town and you come across this amazing display of um, weaponry. Um, we've got aircraft and we've got missiles and we've got rockets and things. This one here is a, uh, a Meteor, I believe. And it was a twin engine, um, it was really a, like a reconnaissance or a, a um, it took uh, photographs of, I guess, the aftermath of any rocket that took off and didn't make it or did make it. Uh, the next one we got here um, was a sea slug that um, undertook a lot of trials here in Woomera. Uh, so it was a surface to air missile and it was for the Royal Navy. This one here, this is the Black Arrow. Now the Black Arrow has a little bit of significance here because um, Jude's uncle Alan actually had, well, no involvement with the rocket that I know of. Sorry, I can't get you to the top of it. But he was involved, he was a chippy, a carpenter. So uh, he was here, that, or that uh, Black Arrow, 1969 to 1971, uh, I think there was four tests of the Black Arrow, and I think in 1971 it successfully deployed a satellite into space. It was about 79 kilos worth, so a successful go. So yeah, Alan was here, and he was a chippy, and he was obviously making stuff, <laughs> be it barracks, or be it, um, yeah, places to live, or rocket cradles maybe. Um, the little one, oh, that one there just going past my head now. Look, look at that. That's pretty cool. That one's a drag bomb or something. So obviously when it's deployed, I believe that thing sort of opens up like a parachute and comes down to its thing. Uh, the Akara. This is an Australian made anti-submarine missile. I'm going past here. And um, probably the last one, because a lot of it was all research on the missile side of things, the bombs and things, but obviously um, there was a little bit more importance uh, down the track for um, research, high altitude research rocket. So there's one here off to the left, this one's called the Skylark. So uh, yeah, pretty awesome. Oh, one thing I did point out, I didn't point out, the museum here is under refurbishment. Um, I guess they've started with these babies on the outside and they look really nice for their new paint jobs and things. But the uh, museum is undergoing a bit of a, a refit. But never fear, I am heading over towards the, it's a heritage centre or an information centre. And a uh, little preview there this, yesterday um, was pretty staggering. So we're just going to go walk across the park to some of the, uh, the other artefacts over here. Woomera established in 1947 as a joint project between Britain and Australia. The Woomera range has a long and distinguished history of weapons testings and rocket launching, including the Skylark, the Black Knight and Europa. The first Australian satellite was launched here in 1967. Woomera also aided in the tracking for early satellites and the Mercury manned spacecraft. For over 60 years to the present day, Woomera has been an integral part of the defence and aerospace efforts in Australia and around the world. Okay, now across the other side of the road, have a little bit more military side of things. This is a uh, a Canberra bomber, which was also a reconnaissance plane. Um, I guess by reconnaissance, as I said with the earlier one, once uh, things were fired, they kind of probably followed its progress, because don't forget this was a research station, so they wanted to know how these missiles or these uh, rockets behaved, um, and uh, bring them back for research too and if they failed and or parts of them fell down to the uh, the ground and needed pick up again anyway down the back end here we got uh, I guess another one of a, a prototype of a, one of those drag bombs right here looking very nice um, some other earlier rockets this one here is quite interesting because this ruin that you see right here is stage one. So the rockets, when they fire, obviously you've got you know stage one, stage two, stage three, or whatever. This was picked up out um, in the uh, the desert, and uh, I believe it was um, stage one, and it was uh, taking a um, a satellite 
up into orbit and this one here was successful i think it may have been australia's first yeah it was uh, the first australia's first design built satellite launch and this launched a, a satellite uh it's called the redstone rocket i should say and it placed australia fourth in the world to launch a satellite up there it's pretty pretty cool that baby there and i think that was way back in uh 1967. that's it um yeah another prototype of the sea slug i believe mark one um this baby down here has a lot of wreckage that was also uh retrieved after it was uh fired it was a blue streak it played a pretty big part here in Woomera, i believe it was a massive rocket um other rocket engines left laying around this one here um yeah it's a big bugger this one this one here was capable of um i think housing a warhead nuclear warhead in the front this little device is going to be really uh, interesting and in in another little thing that i'm going to talk about but um not only did you have the reconnaissance flights um from the the planes but apparently they had a bunch of these vehicles manned all over the place and they were following the missiles as they went and then i suppose in closing this big beast here this was called the black knight and uh, there was many stages of of this uh, from what i can work out is that whatever was in there like the warhead or whatever it was um it was placed upside down i think it says so that uh when it reached sort of like maximum and uh it got released then all all that um just had to come straight down to the ground <laughs> If you understood that, you're doing good. Anyway, we'll toodle over to the um, the Heritage Museum and uh, see whether I can make any more sense of things going on. Right, interesting little spot. This marks um, a survey for the town of Woomera. Now, the town of Woomera was kind of like made by this bloke who was approached by the, um, the Army, the Air Force, these guys. I'm back here. Um, he was Len Bedell, and he's got, he's an absolutely amazing, got some fabulous stories. Let me tell you what happened. Anyway, one story, what he was, a surveyor. He basically was a modern day um, explorer. All those other guys had, had sort of found these places before. He made them a lot more accessible by putting all these roads and um, making them nicer and easier to get to. There's one little story that he did, it was so funny. Um, I hope I don't upset anybody if they want to read the story. Um, he was going up the Stuart Highway like we did, um, from Adelaide or Port Augusta to um, Alice Springs. Anyway, on the way up there, the road was blocked. This dirt road was blocked because a truck had got bogged right up to its mud guards. Anyway, uh, he had the heavy machinery, nobody was around. So he pulled the truck out of the uh, bog and uh, proceeded to make the road nice, fix it all up. And uh, the story goes is that the truck driver got bogged, couldn't get out, thought, hell, truck driver ain't for me. And uh, he just left the truck and walked away. Walked to a farm, got a lift to uh, the railway station, and then caught the railway station back to his headquarters, which I don't know where that was, whether it was Adelaide or Port Augusta. And he said, sorry, boss, truck ain't for me. Boss goes like, well, where's the truck? And he said, stuck up Stuart Highway somewhere. So Len was saying, he said, uh, he found out later that this guy, um, the owner of the truck company, he said, I wonder what he was like when he, when he drove all the way out there to find this truck on probably the most pristine parts of the Stewart Highway that had been all graded and all rolled in bits and pieces. And this truck parked on the hard and it's not bogged at all. <laughs> Good story. It would have been a laugh to be in there. Anyway, let's go and find a bit more out about Len Bedell. Here we go. Need to read up on this bloke, Len Bedell. He was a bit of a uh, journalist, a bit of a cartoonist too, I think. There were a few cartoons. But an amazing bloke, and he uh, put in a lot of tracks around Australia. Um, he was approached by these guys in, uh, who were planning a, a rocket range, a, a testing area, and um, he was asked, does he know an area with a wide, expansive um, area that uh, won't fall into harm of uh, people and infrastructure? He says, I've got just the spot. So yeah, dragged him out here to Woomera and said, you know, from here to 
I think it was 80 mile or something, there's over 1500 kilometres worth of um, straight as a die type um, land where it won't affect anything. So that's how Warmer got uh, based here. Um, he then obviously then put on a lot of the tracks so that um, a lot of all the survey vehicles could be um, uh, put in place so that they could track the rocket's trajectory and also probably drive in to go and retrieve some of the parts and things too. So uh, it's pretty good. So he, would, he made the old gun barrel highway and um, he uh, opened up some two and a half million kilometres of land. Hats off to you, Len Bedell. I'm pretty sure there's a fair few four-wheel drivers that are very happy with their playground out there. Anyway, let's go in and have a look at uh, some of the interesting stuff in this museum. Right, an interesting fact I found was how Woomera beca became called Woomera. What you have is an Aboriginal spear. This is this item down here, right? But what they used to throw the spear was the thing they called a Woomera. Now this has got a little notch in here and that goes into the end of the spear. And then you hold the handle at this end and the spear and when you go to throw it, you let the spear go, hold onto the handle and continue through with your throw and it puts a huge amount of extra exertion into the spear. And where are we? At a rocket testing facility. So that's where Wilmer got his name. How cool was that? Oh, and also down here too, I talked about Len Bedell and of course Wilmer is down here. And what they wanted was an area of Australia that was free of a lot of infrastructure or people and things. That was the window they had out towards 80 mile, 80 mile beach. So yeah, pretty lucky about that, weren't they? So I've just come out of the old uh, rocket side of things. Here's a little tribute in this little area. Excuse the noise of the, the radio here, but Len Bedeal. This is a little tribute to him, the bush basher. And uh, it's got some little stuff here around of Len when he was uh, doing his tracks and things. There's some uh, compasses. And then over in here, some instrumentation that he would use to do his tracks. And on there is a, um, a marker of the tree and he used to put an aluminium um, piece of metal on the tree and it would have the GPS coordinates and things like that of the location and uh, some of his effects. So sadly, as I say, Len passed away in 95 and hopefully we have a little bit of time and I remember to go out but uh, at the Woomera Cemetery there is a, uh, a memorial to him. So we'll stay tuned and hopefully we'll find a bit of Len's memorial out there. Oh well, there you go. I have just completed the Woomera Heritage Visitor Centre. Highly recommended little place to go and visit. As I say, disappointing not to see the actual museum, but that's pretty damn good. Um, there's also a bowling alley in there. It's open at certain times. 
there's a, um, a supermarket in there that has um, got all your little essential items um, and a great little um, cafeteria and a bakery and bits and pieces in there too, cafeteria. They do nice um, breakfasts, lunches and things in there as well. So yeah, awesome little spot here in Woomera. I'm going to go back to the caravan park where I left you slaving away, poor girl. She's doing a great job though, so I take my hat off to you. Thanks Jude for all the work you do there. And uh, it's a good, good effort. Back to the caravan park and I'll show you around there. As this, we're just casually walking down the street of Woomera and just coming across the section. I don't know whether you can see that. One, two, three, four. <laughs> I could just see the new road sign out on the street. Watch out for emus. Just walked into the caravan park from the little visit down into town, so as promised. Over in the back through the trees there, you see some um, sort of like apartment type areas. Well, that's left over from the defense side of things. So I think the caravan park utilizes those. Entrance in over there. Um, there's a great um, little bar facility in here. Um, some good price um, drinks and a bit of entertainment sometimes, I believe. There wasn't any last night, but they might be on Fridays or something. Oh, sounds like I've got reception. <laughs> um, but yeah, nice little spot to chillax and uh, catch up with your neighbors. And yeah, your neighbors could be anywhere up there. Bunch of powered sections through the middle, and there's um, plenty of um, non-powered sections as well. Um, the kitchen facilities and the toilets are fairly basic, but then of course you've got good kitchen facilities in your campers and things. Um, but yeah, barbecue areas, yeah, good little spot to stay and well priced. Well, here we are as promised. I've managed to find the uh, memorial stone here for uh, Len Bedell and his wife Anne Bedell. And uh, yeah, it's quite fitting that, uh, well, wait for the scar to go by, it's quite fitting that down the bottom here, is a, um, a survey marker and it was um, authorized by the Office of the Surveyor General, South Australia, that commemorates and recognizes Len's lifetime involvement in the survey of Australia Outback. It has uh, been, uh, the coordinates have been converted to astronomic coordinates. <laughs> what a fitting tribute to uh, a man that, uh, oh, like many before uh, him, uh, did put Australia on the map, but he literally put Australia on the map. So Len Bedell's memorial is overlooking some of the wide open spaces. Of course, it has to be wide open space because this is a, a rocket testing range. <laughs> but uh, a fitting tribute. I, I'm very pleased I've uh, come out here to see where his ashes have been. Anyway, uh, we are legging it, Port Augusta. It's a nice little uh, free camp that we're going to head to and uh, see you have spent a couple of days. See you down the road. Thanks for watching Sweet As RV. Keep pushing that like, subscribe and follow button please. <laughs> we're loving it and I hope you're loving it too. I'm a woman and this play this episode <laughs> Yeah
Warning, this episode could be a blast. <laughs> I'm at the Woomera um, Defence, damn it, a, uh, the train, and then he caught the train from there into um, Port Augusta, I think it was, or Adelaide, one of the two. Now the spear is called a Kalalu. Kal Wakey wakey rising shine. Hello. <laughs>